Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us. It is the second day of the Zero Conference 2022, and we are here on the stage of the Fireside Chats. Um, I'm going to moderate this session. We, we will be together uh, for the next 15 minutes to discuss on inclusive innovation, uh, working and a special program working with mainstream digital solutions to transform employment services in Kenya and Bangladesh. I will have, and I have the pleasure to invite now, um, Mr. Angel Perez. Please tell me if I'm pronouncing right your name. <laughs> it's very <laughs> difficult to, uh, to do it correctly with all our guests here in Vienna. Um, hello, hello everyone. Yeah, my name is Angel, Angel Perez. Um, Ankel Pere, okay, then I get it right now. Um, <laughs> dear Mr. Pere, you are uh, a technology and inclusive innovation lead at Leonard Sheshai, right? Yes, exactly that. Yes. Thank you for being here. And, and I know that you're working on, a, on this three-year program designed to develop, test, validate, and share learning from innovative, in, innovative interventions to directly improve access to waged employment in the private sector for 7,000 uh, women and men with disabilities in Bangladesh and Kenya. And you yourself are based in UK, right? Yes. Okay, so I, yeah. can you tell us more uh, about this program and, and um, the connection between UK and, and these countries? Yes. Um, yeah, uh, so the, um, <clears throat> the, it's called uh, the Innovation to Inclusion Program, I2I, uh, that's a summary. It's a three-year program funded by the um, FCDO, yeah, UK Aid, and it's um, a consortium of organizations of which they are part, um, Leonard Cheshire, ILO, um, EDF, uh, European Disability Forum, and some other ones that um, sort of, due to budget cuts, we had to, uh, um, separate, but you know, uh, GDI Hub and some local organizations, uh, local partners in in Bangladesh. The, the the aim of the program was to develop a set of, to test a series of innovative approaches to uh, support the employment, uh, the access to employment for persons with disabilities in in both countries, in Kenya and Bangladesh. Um, there are different aspects of the program um, where where we would be. But we aim to be working directly with with influencing governments, um, working with DPOs, and one key aspect, one key pillar of the program was um, working with technology and, and and innovations to be able to support the access to employment. And Mr. Um, Perez, sorry to interrupt, but this would be the 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 namely the the innovations that uh, you have been testing. So, what is there to be tested innovately in order to to do things differently this time? Yeah, so what we were looking for is um, sort of apply a, a model where we were we were trying to tackle many areas of the access to employment and think about how could we uh, address uh, these issues through through innovation. So we had five pillars, which was about um, engagement and registration of users into a digital pathway that we developed. Great. Um, <clears throat> the skills assessment to better understand what were the, the, the skills needed and demanded by employers and, and for users to also understand what kind of skills they needed to develop. Um, we wanted to provide access to, to work and we wanted to be able, uh, we, wanted, we wanted for them to be able to, we went to work as well with uh, companies to be able to make them more inclusive as well. And in, 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 the, fi in the final instance, sort of look at the, at the model itself and see in which ways we could keep improving them. So in implementation, the way that this worked in both countries was uh, we we work from the bottom up. So we wanted to identify what kind of existing solutions were already there that we could adapt to the needs of persons with disabilities. Um, and this is sort of following a twin track, twin track approach where we wanted to target specific solutions for specific individuals, but at the same time, uh, mainstream uh, disability uh, and inclusion strategies. So in Kenya, for example, we partnered with um, Fusu, which was a, a local um, employment platform that was aimed at the general public. Uh, but they, they, they were already quite successful and they had quite a, a prominent presence in the, in, in the Kenyan um, uh, ecosystem. 
the interesting thing that our interesting approach to this was to work with them making their service accessible mm -hmm. and not only accessible but also inclusive so to make sure that people with disabilities persons with disabilities were seeing themselves identified so in partnership with them and uh, the national council for persons with disabilities in kenya we we develop a platform which is now called the national council for persons with disabilities career portal wow. where users with with users with disabilities and job seekers with disabilities who are registered with the National Council are able to access um, not only to search and, and, look and apply for jobs, but also to, to, to access a different set of services that are offered through the platform, mm -hmm. which before weren't fully accessible to them through, through the sort of mainstream portal. Um, so we will have what we have achieved is that we now have a, a mainstream portal that in itself is accessible to anyone and, and a specific um, national council portal uh, for users registers uh, with uh, with this government agency. Um, one of the interesting aspects is that there are uh, there are different tools like um, assessment or self assessment of one's skills. There's uh, there's advice and support for career coaching. There's job matching um, of users and roles uh, depending on their skills. And there's also access to a lot of content um, relevant to persons with disabilities, but also e-learning. Um, the interesting thing about the e-learning is that we partner with an with a e-learning provider in, in the UK who was very keen on developing a very, very inclusive um, approach to, to e-learning. And in this case was um, a set of uh, 18 soft, skill, soft skills modules and five digital mm -hmm. skills modules. Mr. Pera, uh, if you allow me to ask, um, because I see that you have been, I mean, this seems possible also thanks to many, many partnerships, right? Um, what works actually to create effective partnership with technology organizations to design, develop and deliver digital employment innovations and services for for people with disabilities in these um, developing countries. So they are not countries, um, advanced ones, let's say, although I think that actually it doesn't, um, even if a, if a country is richer, uh, disability issues may be still present, although in these uh, countries. But my key um, uh, question here is, what do you think is more effective when building these partnerships? Yeah, I think that the key aspect is to identify who are the legal, uh, the, the local uh, players, and specifically always working with um, organizations that are, uh, as, as we usually uh, work in, in our approach in Lerner Chesha, which is working with local partners. Um, this in, in, in Bangladesh it was through CSID, um, uh, one of the disabled, disability organizations, and um, BBDN. Um, to really understand the cultural and the local context and being able to identify who are the players who are probably interested um, and keen to, to work with disability um, uh, organizations and, and in those schemes. And I think what's really important is to make sure that these um, local partners who are experts on, on disability and, and the cultural context are sitting, are sitting at the table when having this discussion about the solutions that we want to develop uh, and implement in this country. So um, in Bangladesh, for example, it, from the from the get go, a series of, of potential partners were identified and these were um, recommended uh, or, or identified by the by the local partners. And, and in this case, we, we work with um, BT Jobs, which is the largest largest employment platform in Bangladesh. Who, who in the same way or similar way to what we did in Kenya, work closely to be able to, 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 to begin to offer their services to, to the broader um, disability job seeker community as well. Um, um, yeah. yeah, Mr. Perez, so to understand it right, um, the, your project has, has finished, so it's a, it's a completed one or is it in a... Yeah. So, so you reach the goal of the seven thousand um, women and men with disabilities in this. Yeah. Tool. So we we we've we've, um, we've reached the goal of, of uh, over uh, seven thousand people registered registering to the portals in both uh, in both countries. 
and about uh, just over 450 people employed through through the portals and many more and, and in between there's a, uh, a numbers of people who have been who have received some form of uh, a skills training as well as <laughs> I apologize. Sorry, uh, we had a technical problem here. We heard you, but yeah. we had a uh, interfering noise. Now it's all clear. Please continue. Excellent. Yeah. So yeah, we we, we have reached uh, uh, those numbers, and we are also working with with employers, obviously, to make them uh, to 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 take disability inclusion training and to offer jobs and to mm -hmm. make sure that they make uh, assessments of their workplace to, to, to ensure the accessibility is uh, at the heart of it. So some of, some of the tasks uh, that we've done. So your program somehow has a sustainability, right? After you finish somebody, I mean, this is, as a process is going on. Yeah, so we have the, the program it will end at the end of March officially, but we have a a sort of three months take extension to keep uh, um, um, tied on, tying up those knots in terms of sustainability. So in the, in the case of Kenya, for example, what we want to is to strengthen this partnership between uh, this private organization, uh, FUSU, who, who developed the, the platform and runs it, mm -hmm. and the National Council, who provides the sort of services uh, additional or added to this, to this platform. So this is where, where we're working now, and we are hoping that um, that the, the the service that, that we've implemented will be there for the for the long term through this partnership. I see. Um, if 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 I would ask you how can commercial digital technologies be used innovatively in these low resource settings to promote the inclusion of persons with disabilities, can you give like two three concrete or one concrete um, example on this? Yeah, I think that the, the interesting thing is engagement. I think mm -hmm. it's important that, that we identify who are who are these you know these organizations or these digital services that are offering um, services to the to the general population, and begin to have these one-to-one -one or these conversations about disability and inclusion, which often hasn't haven't been had. So I think uh, what's important is that there are solutions already in the countries that can easily be adapted to the needs of persons with disabilities, but often these conversations haven't, haven't been had in terms of inclusion. Mm -hmm. So I think that's kind of one of the key elements of that. And, and finally, I think uh, one of the most important things is to ensure that uh, any activities that potentially involve technology and innovation are uh, developed with this concept of inclusive innovation, that we make sure that in, in the process of you know, developing products, persons with disabilities are included, not only as, a, as, as consultation, so gathering information, but also in the decision making and in the shaping of what these products mean, mean for them and how um, what the impact is going to have. So to make sure that these products are adequate, we need to make sure that the persons with disabilities are involved in the development of yeah, this. Yeah, in the co-designing and the co-development, these are very important um, aspects. And as we are in our last two minutes, um, do you want uh, to, sh to um, share any really key learnings um, uh, with the disability and technology community from your e experience on these inclusive innovation practices? Yeah, I think one of, one of the key learnings I think for us was very important is that, and especially through through the challenges that we experienced through COVID, is that you know not not everything has not everything not a digital solution is unique, and I think it's important to think about services like these as, as blended services, so mm -hmm. that. Um, uh, skills or sort of the, the access to digital services are also supported by by people by systems that are necessarily digital so we we for example like set up um, access centers for people to be able to access these this platform and get support human support to how to how to participate on that um and i think it's important again in this this option of, of engaging with people is that the content is relevant to persons with disabilities so they are involved in the creation of content they are involved in the stories that are being told about themselves because it creates products that are um essentially or that people can essentially identify with and i think this for me are two two of the key um aspects that i think are important in 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 these sort of collaborations Thank you very much. So I think we leave the floor by um, stating that uh, there is always room for innovation practices 
uh, and there will always be, uh, but we need to keep at the center and at the inclusion uh, in the co-designing and co-producing uh, people with disabilities themselves, so we have better center solutions, let's say, right? Yes, indeed. I think um, inclusion has to be waived into innovative processes in the ways we uh, develop technology. I think at the moment we have um, uh, concepts like uh, human center design, uh, but often, you know, I think they, they, they forget the, the relevance of, of thinking about inclusion at the very heart of it. And, and including persons with disabilities at every stage of the innovation process, whether you are in, 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 in ideation stage discovery and moving to um, alpha development and implementation, you need to make sure that there is steering groups, working groups of ways in which um, um, disabled users can engage. Thank you very much for joining us and I wish you all the best and hopefully let's meet next year physically here in Vienna for the Zero Thank Project you. Conference. All the best to you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.